Hi everyone, welcome back to my Country Craft Corner. How in the world are you guys doing today? It is so good to see you again, and thank you so, so, so much for coming back to see what I'm up to. <laughs> well, it is Saturday after the Friday afternoon when I said I'm so tuckered out. And I am, I'm still so tuckered out, but y'all, I cannot get this wool nose spray off my mind. It keeps going around and around and around in my head and I wake up thinking about it and I sit around thinking about it and I've just got to do it. I've just got to do it. I've never done, well, I haven't done one the way I'm planning on doing this one. So that's what's driving me crazy. It's because I've got to create not I've got to, I want to create, and I want to do something a little bit bigger and a little bit bolder, and something that will stand the test of time, too. So, <laughs> oh, things have been going around in my head. Plus, I've got all these different accent pieces to incorporate. So, anyway, that's what I'm here to do today, and I've saved a whole video for just this purpose, to do just this spray. And I'm hoping that it's gonna work out and it's going to turn out pretty. Fingers crossed, guys. Oh, my goodness. But come along with me while I turn on my creative juices and see if I can channel them into something, something that is gonna look pretty at the bottom of the, my staircase there. And then I have to put my bows at my swag points and then I'll show you the finished product when I'm done. But first of all, I need to get my little glue plot going here. I just read the direction, so I'm gonna turn my camera and point it down, and I'm going to tell you what this is and show you how it works, and I am going to be utilizing it today, I hope, anyway, we'll see how it works. I'm not gonna pull out my massive blue glue gun for this. Instead, I think I want, because I think I'm gonna be sticking things in and I think I'd rather dip it in a glue pot. I've never used a glue pot before. This is new to me, so we'll see how this works out. Lots of new stuff for, for O.R. Lynn here today. <laughs> so I'm hoping I can bring it all to fruition. Fingers crossed, as I said. Uh, so I'm gonna turn my camera, point it down, and we're gonna get this glue pot plugged in and set up, and then we're gonna get started making this bull nose spray. Be right back behind the camera. Okie dokie guys, here I'm back. And this is the glue pot that Kristen got me for Christmas. It's called Shore Bonder Glue Skillet. And apparently what you do is you stick your glue stick in it like that and plug it in. First thing I wanna do is I wanna take apart this old spray that I had on the bullnose for several years, pretty much since we moved in, I guess. I made that the first year. First thing is I have a set of lights on here and they've been on here for a while too. So let me see. I know this thing is probably gonna come apart pretty easily. But we'll see. It is so cold here again today, and this is Saturday. Oh, so cold. I think it was minus two when I woke up this morning. Very rarely do we see sub zero temperatures like that. Plug it in, see if it still works. And it does. Yay. All right, so I will put that back on, hopefully, whatever I do here. And I'm just going to take this thing apart. Here's everything that I took out of this spray. And then remember, I have all 
all of these things. Two. I don't know how much of these I will use. I think with all these pip areas, I think I can retire this thing. I don't think I'm going to need it. I'm not sure I'll need these. I think I have those. So we'll see. And of course, my zinnias, definitely. Check it out. These winter zinnias. Huh? I think they'll look nice. All right. First things first though, I am gonna move this off of my mat while it's melting there. I'm going to go ahead and make my funky bow. I decided instead of that lighter color burlap that I hauled yesterday, I decided I'm gonna use my darker one. Just because I like it better with these, it just matches really, really well. And that was a little lighter than that. So. Let's see, I am going to go ahead and make these at 26 inches long. I'm gonna have eight inch tails and a 10 inch bow, or 10 inch loops, excuse me. So I'll have eight inch tails, so I will go to eight and then add 10 because I want a five inch loop, 18, and then add eight more will give me 26. So I need three loops of each type of ribbon at 26 inches long. And just to say, like I always do, or always try to when I'm making a funky bow, one of these days I guess I'll quit saying this, <laughs> but I did not, I am not the creator of the funky bow. Instead, where I learned it from was a lady over there at Southern Charm Wreaths, called, her name is Julie, and that's where I learned how to make the funky bow. Now my funky bows are different than hers, and I've kind of made my own little shortcuts and things, but I, that's where I learned the basic concept of making a funky bow. I'm sure she does many things different than I do and better, but I just want to give her credit and a shout out. And she doesn't know me from Adam. She has no clue who I am, I'm sure. <laughs> but I sure appreciated her doing this, teaching how to do the funky bow. So there's three of the, what I call my pip berry ribbon. What you looking for? Back here. Sorry. And Here is my plaid ribbon that I just love and have been using a lot of in my cozy country decor. And somebody asked me uh, for a link of where I found this and you know what, I gave it and now I can't remember where it was from. But I'll see if I can find it for you again and I'll put it in the description for this. This is lovely, it's not real thick ribbon but it is wired and it goes with everything. Well, at least in my decor it does, with the burgundies and the khakis and so on. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and speed through the rest of this cutting and dovetailing. I'll show you how I dovetail and I'll speed through the other one so we can get on with this making of this bow. The way I dovetail is I pile all three pieces up on top of one another and then I fold it lengthwise. And then I go to the edge. Most people that I see on YouTube go to the go to the fold and that works absolutely wonderfully fine. I just happen to go to the edge because that's the way I've always done it. And you cut up at an angle and that gives you doves tails. So I will be back when I'm done cutting those the, this burlap and dovetailing the ends of that and then we'll get started. I'll show you how I make a funky bow. Be right back.
Okie dokie. I'm back and let's get started making this funky bow. What you do is you fold this piece in half and you come back down here to your board and you measure and make sure you have a five inch loop. Bring it up, pinch it together, and then I always go to the underneath side, whether I have two sided or one sided ribbon. You have to do this with one sided ribbon, but I also do this with two sided ribbon and twist just to bring the what you know to be the right side up. Because even if it looks like it's double sided ribbon, this is slightly different. So, and with a nine loop funky bow or an odd numbered looped funky bow. I always, I have found that I like to sit, switch directions each time I make a loop. So turn it the other way and kind of accordion it together for lack of a better uh, way to describe it. And these loops or ribbon where you're pinching it will not end up side by side by side by side by side. Some will end up on top, some will end up on the bottom. It's all good. You don't have to worry about it. The bow is gonna work out regardless of how the pinched pieces are arranged under your fingers. I just kind of accordion them together at first. I always try to pull my loops up and then I grab this with my pinky to get it out of the way before I twist. Grab that with my pinky and then twist. There's our first three loops and on we go. Fold it in half or close to it. Doesn't have to be perfectly in half. Just kind of sort of there. Turn it the other direction this time. Pinch it. Hold it up with my middle finger this time and twist. And on we go. We'll speed up just a smidge. This burlap is really thick and I'm having to really pinch it hard with my fingers so that's why my, my hand is cramping so I need to kind of move it on along here. You would think, you know, it would be like exercising that your hand would get in shape, you know, but I don't think it works that way. Because <laughs> I sure make a lot of bows. You would think I'd be in better shape that way. Sorry about that. Kristen called me. Talk to her for a few minutes here. All right, back to the funky bow. Well, we're gonna have to finish this thing up. Good. Make sure it's a five inch loop. Turn it this way. Pinch it together. As I was getting ready to say, or I was saying when I saw her call come in, I don't know whether you guys can tell it, but I've got a hold of this bow all the way. You see, it's like I'm, I'm holding it like this with my forefinger and my thumb, and I keep having to expand this, you know, the distance. So, and it's kind of gone down into the crook of my thumb. When you try this, you'll understand what I'm saying. So I am really literally, my whole hand, I'm using my whole hand, all the fingers and everything to manipulate this bow. So these bows are very doable, very, very doable. Yes, your hand might cramp, but not as much as it does when you make other bows, honestly. I know that probably seems like, yeah, right, Arlen, how can that be? But it's the truth. It really doesn't hurt as much as making a round, big round bow or a tiered bow. On my head cleaner, here we go. Go to about, I'm done with all of the loops now. Go to about the center point on your pipe cleaner and lay it right across beside your thumb lift your thumb if you can and then grab it and then i put it between my first two fingers and pull it around and pull it around the side now this is important too to try to make sure that you have it 
I didn't have it quite in the middle there, did I? <laughs> Good job, follow my own directions. Is when you tie it shut, or when you twist it, try to make sure that it is in the middle of the bundle you're holding. And you'll be able to feel where the middle is. You don't have to look, you'll be able to feel. But then twist, shake that hand out and twist. There we go. The start of a pretty funky bow. And I can hear you guys already saying this, those of you who are with me all the time, take time to fluff up your bow. This is the most important part. I want to make it a little tighter. The most important part of a pretty bow is the fluffing and the moving around of your tails. And they don't have to be, they can be right beside each other, but if you want them to be separated, separate them. And eventually you may want to trim them down a little bit, you know? But. Obviously, when you make a funky bow, you want to pick coordinating ribbons. And in this case, I, I really like this combination, so that's not why I'm not straying away from it too much here for this decor. But anyway, there we go. And I'm sure once I get it attached to whatever spray I'm fixing to make here, that I will tweak it some more and see how it looks once it's on there but I'm really, really pleased with this already. It looks super pretty. There we go. All right, now, I'm gonna start with this. And this is just nothing more than a grapevine. It looks like somebody wanted to make a, a spray. You would use this as the middle like tie a bow there and then work your way out. I mean, that would be pretty right like that to hang, you know, on a wall. But that's not the way I want to do it. I want to use it kind of this way. And I want the bow to be attached down here, which will be kind of on the front of the bull nose. I very well might make some tails and hang some tails from this bow. And then this part is going to kind of lay up on the railing as you go up the steps and that's so I'll tell you what I'm gonna maybe put a little tie wrap around that portion of this design and I'm gonna walk over here to my full nose to make sure that I'm right on this but I don't want to go but when I'm making my decor I don't want to go below this point let me go make sure I'm right Hang on, I'm right back. Yes, I think that's gonna work beautifully. I'm actually going to stick this part down into the bull nose. The certain, you know, the bull nose, Vicki asked me what a bull nose is. And I, I on the staircase, and this is the only thing I've ever heard it, I've never heard it called anything else. And our builder called it that. So that's why I call the very bottom of the staircase where the staircase where the railing wraps around it makes a bull nose and so this will go right down inside the bull nose and it will camouflage where that light switch is plugged in or the lights uh, strand is plugged in all right so now I'm just going to start building. I'm telling you, I'm not sure about this blue pot. It's doing okay, but let me see. And I got a picture of the bow on here. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and tie this bow on. And I think I want to go ahead and make two tails first. And I think I'm going to, instead of the plaid, I'm going to make them out of this one this time because 
that's what all of the other bows on the staircase are made out of, is this ribbon. So, let me find the center. I didn't measure that. I just kind of eyeballed that. And I'll end up cutting them up pretty much, probably. Right, like that. And that will give us two quick tails. Put you guys up a little bit. All right, now I'm gonna tie this on. Right above my tie wrap there. Now I said I was gonna put some felt underneath, but I'm not. I, I went over there just to help the uh, railing not to get scratched. This is not gonna scratch it though. The railing is really nicely done and it's not going to scratch it. So there we go. Got the funky bow tied on. And I want to tie it a little tighter actually. I'm not sure I'm going to be using too much of that blue. I'm going to start out tying these three together with the tie wrap pretty low so that I can spread them out. Cut them down a little bit. We're out. them right on. Can you see that loop there? I'm going to tie them right on here. What about a cattywamp? Okay, now I'm actually going to separate them out and I'm going to tie each section and separate them and tie them down. Thank goodness for tie wraps, huh? turn it this way, you're going to see a little of this underneath and laying up on the rail, I hope. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, okay. Now.
again, you guys, if you are florists, you probably cringe when you watch me because I do not, I truly do not have any training when it comes to floral arranging or anything like that. I just, honest to goodness, do what makes my eyes happy. And I'm just going to start with these three. If I could learn how to use these cable ties, it would sure help. With tying these three Gerbers on. Just as the start of, as, of my kind of little bit of a design here. I think I need this one needs a little bit more anchoring, doesn't it? By the way, Chris got me new shelves. He was going to build shelves, and then he decided not to. He found these on, I don't know, somewhere online, and he's installing them for me today out in the garage. So when I get done all of this transitioning over, we're going to work out there for a little bit because we're just transferring stuff right now. So, All right, there we go. So far, so good. Now, how many Gerbers do I have? I have that and then maybe one oh, out the top and then fill in. Let's see. Chris has got a heater on in the garage. That shows you like a space heater. That shows you how cold it is. That man, he never gets cold. But I do. And he's out working out there with a heater on. That shows you it has to be cold. <laughs> Look at this, it fell apart. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to glue that. Look at that dumb thing. my glue, huh? Before I glue it back on there. Here we go. That was inconvenient. Okay. Some things that I know for sure I want in here are these things. Now,
I'm just kind of laying them in right now. So don't hold me to anything. <laughs> these I think I'm going to glue for sure. down a little bit. I don't hate to do this upside down, but I'm thinking y'all might be able to see a little bit better. I don't have a like any way to I might use a tie wrap for that because that's exactly where I want it. And to and then glue it too. Bet you I'm in your way now, aren't I? Oh my goodness. These don't bend very well. They just, they're kind of stiff. And then I want one up here. Again, I'm going to encourage you guys to walk outside your comfort zone because I sure am today. <laughs> I am definitely walking outside my comfort zone. This is something that I really never, to this scale, really never done. And it's working out okay so far. So far, so good. I'm not sure I'm going to like this glue pot though. I think I might like a glue gun better. Things are so old. <laughs> and, and this is when I can start to do a little gluing. But you know what, you guys? I think I'm going to plug in my glue gun. I don't like the thought of putting things in like this. I forgot your mother's in it, didn't I? And then having to take them back out and then set them in again with the glue pot. I like to be able to set things in and be satisfied that that's where I want them, you know? So watch me unplug. Oh, I might work with this here. So it's not really hot. Look at that. Ooh. I'm going to unplug this thing now. Kristen said, she said, Mom, I don't have a clue in the world why you think you would like this thing. And I'm like, well, I don't think, and she said, this thing is terrible. You should get a better one. <laughs> I guess maybe this didn't really, 
melt them the way it should. So, all to get the industrial size glue gun out. Ta-da! Check it out. Okay, Chris just came to supervise me with this thing since this is the first time I've ever <laughs> used this. And he set me up to a temperature of, a, of 300. Good Lord, you guys. Um, it can go up as high as, well, I don't know. Where did he said here, it can go up as high as 400. There you go, you can see. But we're gonna start with 300. I need to take some time to warm this puppy up. And I just used the, uh, ah, I just used the glue stick that I was using in the pot. So we'll see how this works. In the meantime, revisit this a little bit and continue to pooch some stuff into this thing. I've gotten really quiet, you guys. I understand that. I'm just creating as I go. You guys have said thank you so much that you don't mind the silence, which I am so grateful for you saying that. <laughs> because when I'm doing something new like this, I just tend to get really quiet. And I never knew that about myself until I started my YouTube channel, obviously. And then I realized, oh my goodness, I'm not saying anything. These folks are gonna think I'm going a little crazy or something here. to work with this bow just a smidge to see if there's not a little something something I might like to glue into the bow. One in the center might look really cute, huh? Well, you gotta be kidding me. I never turned it on. <laughs> uh, okay, hang on. I also have these little owls. And I thought, how cute would they be kind of stuck in here, willy nilly here and there? Talk about thinking outside the box, huh? Now, i got to wait for my glue gun to heat up. I'm not sure if I want to use any of these. I'm kind of liking it without these. But, I really wanted to try to use one of these puppies. It's got a little mind of its own. Why 
why not, you know? A little something different. <laughs> a little something fun. It's like somebody to go, hmm, what is that? I don't think I like them coming up quite that high. Just a little something coming out of it, like a black vine. I can smell that thing heating up now. Woohoo! We'll come back to this bow. Just gotta glue everything in. It's getting there. It is definitely getting there. So here we go with my glue gun. Super easy to pull that trigger. Oh my goodness. What a pleasure. Wow. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is take that glue gun around to all of these pit berries and these little black stems that I put in and just glue them in. And I'm just going to speed through that a little bit because I think we're getting a little long in the tooth here with this video. So here I go. And again, just gluing these into place. Okay, I'm back. Now, I'm just at the point where I'm like, do I just stop while I'm ahead here? Or should I add some, just a few pip berry and a few, a few little owls, just for a little touch of whimsy, you know? Just a little owl here and there. All right, I think. <laughs> as soon as I get done with my owls here, I'm just gonna let this sit for a little while and let it dry a little bit. And I'm gonna go and get it on the bull nose and I'm going to get my other bows on the railing and then I'll come back and show you the finished product. And for right now, as it's sitting here drying, that's what it looks like. So we'll see how it looks when I get it put up. I'm excited. Woohoo! All right, I'll be back in a little while. Hey there everyone, here I came back here first for some final words before I show you the finished product. I still have to put the bows on the swag points and Chris is gonna help me attach this to the bull nose. And then I'll come back with another final <laughs> video with some final words, you know, with the finished product on the bull nose and everything. But I wanted to show you here what it looks like. I went ahead and put a strand of 20 lights, mini lights on a brown cord and I wrap them in and around, and then that will go down through the bull nose and plug in underneath there. So I am really happy when all is said and done with how this worked out. I was nervous about this one and procrastinating for a while about this one, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. I love the addition of the little owls and the pip berries and those black stems. <laughs> they worked out and kind of blended right in really and truly. So I'm, I'm super happy. I love the funky bow and I'm glad I did the funky bow with the, with the bow in the middle, you know, and with the long tails made out of the pip berry, ribbon, which of course I'll cut once I get it over there. So but I'm really happy with it. Really, really happy with it. Whew, and relieved. <laughs> By the way, my pip berries still have not come. They're supposed to, they were supposed to be here by eight o'clock last night. Now they're supposed to be here by eight o'clock tonight. So fingers crossed that 
they come. And if they do, that'll be my next video. If they don't, then we're gonna move on into the living room and dining room and start working in there a little bit. Don't have a lot to do in there. But anyway, I'm gonna say goodbye here and blow you my kiss here and then I'll say goodbye a little bit later behind the camera. So I'll just say until next time, y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye. Okie dokie everybody, here is the staircase completely done. I'll get back and take a better picture of it for you. But all the lights are on on the pit berries. I've got all the all of my bows tied back on at the swag points. And here is my new spray, which I am super duper happy with. I cut those tails up. I had them longer and I didn't like how they looked. So I chopped them up, gave them a haircut. What I really like about this is that the zinnias and these pip berries kind of wrap around the railing. And I really didn't even plan that. It just kind of happened, which I'm really happy about. So that's it. Alrighty, guys, that's it for this one. So I'll just say... Until next time, y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye.